with R. Miss Brooks, starring Eve Harden. Quite frequently in the past, when her principal engaged in a project, he expected the members of his faculty to follow suit. So it was no surprise to Armis Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High, when two weeks ago, Mr. Conklin took up an old hobby of his and then ordered his teachers to pursue a hobby of their own. At first, she was even quite happy when she was ordered to pursue a hobby. In fact, right up until Mr. Conklin informed me that Mr. Boynton wasn't quite what he had in mind. But it was Mr. Conklin's hobby rather than mine that caused most of the difficulty this past week. His avocation was making lifelike figures out of wax, which he then presented to his teachers and insisted that we display them prominently in our homes. Actually, his wax figures of animals were exceptionally good, and the leopard he gave me last Wednesday was extremely lifelike. Thursday morning, when my landlady saw it for the first time, her reaction was immediate. Tiny! Oh. Mrs. Davis! Mrs. Davis, come out of the closet, dear. It's <laughs> not a lie. Uh, not a lie. You're, you're sure it isn't, Connie? Of course I'm sure. Well, all right, then. This leopard is just another of Mr. Conklin's wax figures. Although I will admit they're quite realistic. They certainly are. I don't know what we can do about Mr. Conklin's hobby, but in a way it has had its good effect. How oh, dear. Well, it's forced many of the teachers to take up hobbies when they'd never had one until now. For instance, you've never seen me doing any knitting before. Look what I've accomplished in the last few weeks. Yes, I was noticing those things on the sideboard before you came in this morning. Did you see the things I knitted for Mr. Boynton? Oh, I know he'll be delighted with that, uh, with that, uh... It's a bathing suit. <laughs> of course, dear. I should have known it was a bathing suit as soon as I saw the turtle neck. <laughs> well, anyway, I know Mr. Boynton will be pleased with it when I give it to him at dinner. Well, as soon as I get to school, I'll ask him if... It... Well, that's probably Walter to pick me up. Come on in, Walter. The door's open. I'd better see what I've got left in the kitchen for him. And you know how that boy eats. Uh, <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Hello, Walter. Why, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooks. I... Yay! Mr. Boynton! Mr. Boynton, come out of the closet this minute. I don't look that bad in the morning. Oh, it's the leopard. He's not alive, Mr. Boynton. He, uh, he's not? You're sure? Oh. oh, I get it now. It's another of Mr. Conklin's wax figures. Gosh, they certainly are realistic. I'll, I'll bet you'll never guess what he gave me for my place, Miss Brooks. A wolf. Well, are you learning anything? <laughs> uh, why did you come by this morning, Mr. Boynton? Well, Walter called me a little while ago and said something went wrong with his car, so I decided I'd pick you up instead. Oh, I'm glad you did. And since you're here, I might as well give you the present I knitted for you. <laughs> I was originally going to give it to you tonight at dinner. Uh, here you are, Mr. Boynton. Shows what you can create when you take up a new hobby, doesn't it? Uh, you knitted this for me? Care to jump back into the closet? Oh, no, no, it's, um, it's beautiful. Mm. Uh, beautiful. It, uh, uh, it'll make a wonderful cover for my rabbit cage. <laughs> it's a bathing suit. A bathing suit? With a turtleneck? Well, if you can't use it, just hand it to the nearest turtle. <laughs> oh, oh I'll, I'll use it. And since you've given me your gift already, I might as well give you the things I made for you. I suppose you've been wondering what's in the shoebox I've been carrying. No, I just figured it was your lunch. <laughs> it's the latest product of my wood carving hobby. Go ahead and open it. Oh. <laughs> Why, Mr. Boynton, they're lovely. They're two of the most beautifully carved ashtrays I've ever seen. But they're shoes, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Wooden shoes. Wooden shoes? Oh. I guess what fooled me was you forgot the wooden laces. Well, they just slip on. <laughs> uh, women in Holland wear them all the time. Now, uh, go ahead. See how they fit. All right. First, I have to get my own shoes off. There. Oh, say, this wooden shoe slips on nice and easy. Good. Uh, is it the right size? Oh, yes. Both feet fit into it perfectly. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, they may seem a little loose on your feet at first, but you'll find they're very comfortable around the house. Uh, just try walking in them. All righty. Well, let's go, Mr. Boynton. I've got to see Mr. Conklin the first thing this morning. Well, you're not going to wear those shoes to school, are you, Miss Brooks? You said the women in Holland wear them all the time, didn't you? Oh, yes, but what's that got to do with you? Well, at least today I'm dressed for the part when I get in Dutch with Mr. Conklin. <laughs> I'm not just flattering you. This wax figure you've made of yourself is amazingly lifelike. Why, if I didn't know you were sitting behind that desk, I'd swear you were the wax figure standing beside it. You do believe me, don't you? I ought to, since the wax figure standing beside it happens to be me. <laughs> what? Oh, this is wonderful. This figure behind the desk could fool anybody. Daddy, may I say you're a genius? Over and over again. <laughs> uh, I am rather facile with wax, aren't I? Oh, I should say you are. Oh, uh, yes, yes. My only regret is that there isn't enough room for me to do my modeling at home. It isn't easy to flaunt school rules night after night working in the gymnasium. But I suppose for a true artist, rules are sometimes made to be broken. Oh, I'm so glad you feel that way about rules, Daddy. Then could I skip homework and go out with Walter tonight? And just when did you join the club, Miss Picasso? <laughs> you most certainly cannot. Even if you had no homework, you know perfectly well Denton has a job assisting me evening. <laughs> now, Harriet, I know you have a class, so if you don't mind, kindly get... Goodness, what's that? It sounds like the Martians have finally landed. <laughs> Well, I wasn't far wrong. <laughs> just a moment, please. Now, if you'll excuse me, Harriet, I'm about to make a little experiment to find out just how lifelike that wax figure behind my desk really is. When, Daddy? When I am hidden behind that door and you are out of this office. Through my inner office, please. What? Oh, all right. <clears throat> now to get behind my office door before Miss Brooks comes in. Uh... Here we are. Come in, Miss Brooks. Oh, good morning, Mr. Conklin. Uh, sir, I have a big favor to ask you, an enormous favor. Now, please don't say anything until you've heard me out. It's about tonight. I know I'm supposed to go over some reports with you at your house, but when I agreed to do it, I forgot that tonight Mr. Boynton and I were celebrating his sixth anniversary at Madison. So would it be all right if I went to your house tomorrow night, would it? Hmm? Would it? Mr. Conklin... I just asked you not to say anything until you'd heard me out. Not to never speak again. <laughs> Sir, I, I've never seen you this quiet before. Is your head bothering you? It's coming off. <laughs> if there's anything I can do to help, I'd... It's coming off! Uh, don't worry. We can always weld it back on. <laughs> Conklin, what are you doing in back of me when you're in front of me? Oh, oh, I see it now. One of you is made of wax. <laughs> oh, you certainly gave me an awful start, sir. Well, I'm sorry if I upset you, Miss Brooks, but the figure is rather lifelike, isn't it? Well, truly, sir, it's practically impossible to tell the difference between you and the dummy. <laughs> that, is, that is, there's a remarkable resemblance. Now, about the favor I was going to ask of you... I've already heard you ask it, Miss Brooks, and since I intend working on my wax figures here at school tonight... You may have the evening off. Oh, thank you, Mr. Conklin, thank you. Honestly, you've made me so happy, sir, I could kiss you. If you must, try the wax, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> but in return for this favor of mine, I have a small favor to ask of you. Will you supervise this office during your lunch hour since I have to go downtown to purchase more wax for my figure? Oh, yes, sir, gladly. Good, good. Well, if you don't need me anymore, I'll be on my way to class. Uh, wh one moment, please, Mal Flanders. <laughs> Just where did you get those wooden shoes? Mr. Boynton made them for me, sir. Wood carving is his hobby. Would you come a little closer, Miss Brooks? Yes, sir. 
my, it's lucky this building is earthquake-proof. <laughs> oh, the wood carving on these shoes is excellent, simply excellent. I've been searching for someone to assist me in my work, and Boynton might be just the man. Yes, I think he may do. Mr. Boynton, your assistant? Yes, he'll start working with me tonight on my historical figures. Oh, but, sir, I told you we're celebrating an anniversary tonight. He's supposed to have dinner with me. Miss Brooks, I've made up my mind. Tonight, Mr. Boynton starts with Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette? Uh, Mr. Conklin, I think I may have an idea that will solve both our problems. What's that, Miss Brooks? You take Marie Antoinette and we'll make it a double date. day, while the real Mr. Conklin was downtown, I was sitting in front of our principal's desk, keeping an eye on his office, while the wax figure of Mr. Conklin sat in the chair opposite, keeping his eye on me. Suddenly, the door opened. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Oh, hello, Walter. Mr. Conklin, I have a big favor to ask you, but please don't say anything until you've heard what it is, okay? Don't worry, he won't. Well, sir, it's about tonight. I've been planning a big date with a certain member of your family for a week now, so could I please be excused tonight? After all, sir, I've stood guard outside the gym for five straight nights while you worked inside, so could I please have tonight off? Could I, hmm? Uh Uh-huh. Could I? Mr. Conklin, I just asked you not to speak until I finished, not to never speak again. <laughs> now, Mr. Conklin, do you mean to say you forced this poor boy to stand out in the cold for five nights? Why, I've never heard of anything so heartless, so cruel and inhuman. Now, stop sitting there like a wax dummy and answer me. Yo, holy cow, please, Mr. Conklin, please, sir, you must forgive her. Oh, she's just a poor, hungry, overworked teacher who's finally snapped her cap. <laughs> She'll apologize, Mr. Conklin. I know she will. Only think of the many long, faithful years of service behind her and the pitifully few short years ahead of her. Oh, spare her. Spare her, I beg of you. We kids need her, sir. She's like a mother to us. You'd do even better with grandmother. (laughs) Walter, you can relax. You're only talking to a wax dummy. A wax dummy? That's not the real Mr. Conklin? Of course not. You're sure? Certainly. Now get this marble hat. I'm taking all I'm going to take from you. I won't throw that one under sea. From now on, Harriet goes out with me every night of the week. And if you give me any more lip as to what time I'm going to bring her home, I'll bounce one off your pointed marble head. <laughs> Boy, I had no idea Christmas would come again so soon. That is a little like Christmas again, isn't it? Oh, I'm afraid that rings in the new year. Walter, please don't fool with that wax figure. It's fragile. <clears throat> hello, Wax Museum. Uh, Madison High School. Miss Brooks speaking. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Stone. Could I speak to Mr. Conklin, please? He isn't here right now, sir. Well, tell Mr. Conklin I passed by the school last night and I saw a light burning in the gymnasium. Now, Mr. Conklin knows how strict we are about using school facilities after hours. You just tell Mr. Conklin I'm coming over tonight to find out for myself who is using the gymnasium after school hours. I'll give Mr. Conklin your message as soon as I see him, Mr. Stone. Very well. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. You're going to give Mr. Conklin what message, Miss Brooks? That Mr. Stone's coming over tonight to investigate the light in the gymnasium. But, Miss Brooks, why do that? If Mr. Stone discovers Mr. Conklin here tonight, he'll make him quit his hobby, thus releasing Mr. Boynton and me for active duty on other battlefields. I'm getting to feel more like no man's land every day. Walter, I told Mr. Stone I'd give Mr. Conklin the message when I saw him, and that's exactly what I intend to do. You do? Yes, but I didn't say which, Mr. Conklin. Okay, Waxy, open up your ears. It's almost nine o'clock, Mr. Conklin. I have a date tonight. Uh, perhaps we should come back to these figures tomorrow night. Uh, no, no, uh, I, I can't stop, Boynton. I must work. I guess I've got wax in my blood. <laughs> where, oh, where did I get this heaven-sent talent? Did Julius Caesar ever look more dominating? And look at my Napoleon, Boynton. Did you ever see such a Napoleon? Whenever I look at it, I want to follow the man into battle. Well, it, it, it's rather good, sir. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think of this wax figure of Miss Brooks? 
Now, tell the truth, Boynton. I respect honest criticism. Well, uh, personally, I, I don't think the arms are quite right, because... Boynton, when I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> and what, pray, Mr. Boynton, do you find wrong with Miss Brooks' arms? Well, sir, I speak as one who spent countless evenings in Miss Brooks' company. Boynton, I am in no mood to hear your true confession. <laughs> exactly how would you have treated the arm? Well, a little fuller. Fiddle-faddle. Oh, Mr. Conklin, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. All I really meant was... Quiet, quiet, quiet. I hear footsteps. Mr. Conklin, there's a couple of people coming, and I think one of them is Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone? Good heavens, we've been ambushed. <laughs> What are we going to do, sir? There's no way out. They're coming toward us through the only open door. Boy, then stop making this sound like the ninth episode of The Perils of Pauline. Now we must be calm. That's it. Calm. Calm. And think. Think. I've got it. Listen, <laughs> you hide in the workshop. Yes, sir. Yeah, but what about us, sir? There's no alternative, Boynton. Freeze. Freeze? Yes. If we remain absolutely motionless beside these wax figures, Mr. Stone could never tell us apart. Now, put out the light, Boynton. Sit over there between Marie Antoinette and Josephine. Uh, between Marie Antoinette and Josephine. Oh, Boynton, relax. If Marie Antoinette makes a move toward you, I personally will see that she's guillotined again. As he approached the gymnasium from the outside, Mr. Stone was surprised at something he saw. Uh, Miss Brooks... Didn't the light just go out in the gymnasium? Oh, uh, I'm not sure, Mr. Stone. Hmm. I'm glad I bumped into you. We can investigate this mystery together. Ah, I'll switch on the light. Well, for heaven's sakes, where did they go? Where did who go, Miss Brooks? Uh, whoever was here, I mean. My, these must be the wax figures Mr. Conklin's been working on. <laughs> They're amazingly lifelike, aren't they? Well, the Napoleon and the Caesar are, but that new one of Mr. Conklin wouldn't fool anyone. No living man ever looked like that. <laughs> that would be like Osgood placing his figure between Napoleon and Caesar. He does seem to give them an inferiority complex, doesn't he? And that one sitting over there between Marie Antoinette and Josephine, I believe, is Mr. Boynton, huh? Hmm... Very good. Good. He's gorgeous. <laughs> uh, it is good, isn't it, sir? But this figure of Conklin needs the most work. For one thing, the, the eyes are wrong. They're too close together. <laughs> true, sir. And they lack that certain weasel-like quality. Oh, yes, they're not right, sir. And somehow there's something wrong with those jaws. Oh, the jaws are all wrong. Mr. Conklin has the heavy, beefy jowls of a baby rhinoceros. Miss <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brooks, uh, where does Mr. Conklin keep his art supplies? Oh, in that little workshop over there. You see it, sir? Why do you ask? Uh, frankly, I think I can improve this Conklin figure myself. <laughs> just by adding a little paint here, a dash of hot wax there, and... Moving that left eye over about two inches. <laughs> what was that, Miss Brooks? What was what? Well, I thought I... Oh, never mind. I'll be right back with the materials. Hmm. Maybe I could move that eye over while... No I'm... one is moving my left eye over two inches! <laughs> it's you. Yes, Miss Brooks, it is indeed I. So my eyes lack that certain weasel-like quality. Oh, no, sir. They're very weasel-like. Just... I have the heavy, beefy jowls of a baby rhinoceros, do I? Oh, that was all in fun, sir. No <laughs> living man could look like I do. Oh, it should have been no living woman could hold the job I'm losing. <laughs> Miss Brooks. <laughs> Mr. Boynton. Well, I'm alive, too, Miss Brooks. Want to bet? <laughs> I have no idea. Miss Brooks, this is no time for meaningless talk. I want you to get Mr. Stone out of here as soon as possible. But, sir, Mr. Stone insists on doing you over. Get rid of him, Miss Brooks, or come tomorrow morning, a certain teacher may find herself pounding a beat in some kindergarten. Well, all right, sir. I'll try. See that you do, because... <gasps> here he comes. Hey, it's amazing, Miss Brooks. 
Well, Mr. Conklin's got wax figures all over the place. There's even one of Walter Denton in the workshop. Uh, well, now to get to work on Osgood. Uh, Mr. Stone, don't you think it's rather late? Oh, nonsense, I... Miss Brooks. I haven't had so much fun in ages. Now, first, a touch of red paint on Mr. Conklin's cheeks. Ah. <laughs> Notice how it brings out the eyes, Miss Brooks? Yes, they do look like they're about to pop, don't they? <laughs> Mr. Stone, I, I don't think now we should... Now we build up that chin oh. with a little hot wax, so... <laughs> <laughs> and now the coup de grace. Mr. Stone, what are you going to do with that saw? Well, frankly, that left ear of Conklin's has disturbed me from the moment I first set eyes on it. It's got to go. That's it. Now, one, two... Oh, no! <laughs> I was wondering when you'd decide to give up, Conklin. <laughs> you knew it was me all the time, sir. From the moment I took that first look at you and you crossed your eyes. <laughs> oh. Now, if your left eye had been moved over two inches, you... That was a dead giveaway, wasn't it? I knew Boynton was alive from the moment I mentioned that he was sitting between Marie Antoinette and Josephine, and he began to blush. <laughs> He'd blush if he was sitting between two female frogs. <laughs> I don't mind telling you I consider this infringement of school rules a disgrace. Uh, but, but, sir, if you let me explain... No I, I... explanation is acceptable when a principal violates school rules to the extent of using its facilities after hours without the express consent of the board. Uh, however, I shall overlook the affair this time. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. But hereafter, I shall expect you to pursue your hobby at home. Or find a different hobby. Yes, or find a different hobby. Something without Mr. Boynton. Yes, something without Miss Brooks. <laughs> Of expressing my own thoughts in my own native language. I'm sorry, sir. Well, Mr. Boynton, if we hurry, we can still catch a movie. Oh, uh, uh, just a moment, please. Uh, Conklin, who made that chair Boynton is sitting on? That one? Yeah. Why, Boynton made it himself, Mr. Stone. His hobby is woodcraft. Oh, it's excellent, beautiful work. You know, Boynton, I took up woodwork a few weeks ago myself, and I, I, I find it fascinating. Oh, it is, sir. Um... I wonder if you can drop over sometime and give me a few pointers. Well, any time you say, Mr. Stone. I'd be very happy to. Well, how about tonight? Oh, no. Tonight's impossible, Mr. Stone. Mr. Boynton has already promised to help me out with my hobby. You see, I'm a knitter. Well, how could Mr. Boynton help you out with that hobby? Well, my cat's away, and someone's got to get all tangled up in the wool. Come on, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Now, here's the star of our show, Eve Arden. Mr. Conklin's wax dummies of Marie Antoinette and Josephine were really lifelike, but he just didn't do right by their complexion. Arthur Strokes, starring Eve Arden, Frank Blood, is produced and directed by Larry Burns, written by Arthur Rollsberg and Lou Derman, with the music of Lud Gluskin. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Bob Rockwell, Gloria McMillan, and Joseph Kearns. Hey.